Hi, I'm Tom Walsh. I'm the state representative from the 12th Essex District, which represents um, wards one through four and Peabody, wards five, precincts one and three. And I have been the state representative since March of 2016, um, filling out the uh, unexpired term of Leah Cole. I serve on the city council as well, uh, councilor at large. I am in my second term, uh, having come back from, from years ago. Um, and when I, when I ran for state representative, I said that I would complete my term, which I am currently doing, but I'm not seeking re-election to the city council this year. I just think it's more important that I focus on my state representative's job. Uh, I am doing the city council job. It's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, I enjoy the work tremendously, but I also think that, um, you know, fulfilling that commitment was important, but also, um, really leaving that for someone else to do. Um, had I not um, completed the term, I would have caused a special election, which would have cost the city probably somewhere between twenty and $30,000 to conduct that election. So, uh, you know, I, I felt it was important that I stay and complete my job. Having grown up in Peabody and watching it evolve, um, it's fun. It's just, you know, it's, uh, it's a great city. It's an affordable place to live. It's close to everything. That's what I love about Peabody is you're close to the ocean, you're close to the mountains, you're close to the city, and uh, have a lot of good people. I think since we last talked, we completed our hearings on the Ways and Means Committee. The budget is approximately $40 billion, um, and it, it, it kind of runs the gamut. You have health care, which takes up a significant amount of the budget. Probably about 40% of, of our budget goes towards health care and, and health-related issues. And then, um, you know, your collective bargaining units and things like that, but also police, fire, uh, public safety, all those things are included in the budget. And, you know, it, it's, I think the hottest thing about it is a lot of people come before us with very worthy causes, but we cannot fulfill everybody's request. It's just there, um, there's not enough money to do everything everybody wants. So we have to make choices. And right now, uh, the finishing touches are going on the budget. Um, should be ready for final adoption probably in the next couple weeks. And uh, we, we still will have some tough choices to make. Our economy is strong. Our revenues have not come in um, as, as well as we had hoped they would. Uh, and there are a couple reasons for that. I think the way that our uh, tax structure is, is um, a little antiquated as far as how uh, we're progressing with technology. And uh, for, for example, a lot of people order online now instead of going to a retail store, uh, to, you know, buying electronics or whatever, and not always paying a sales tax. Um, um, car leases are now back as being popular. So when you lease a car as opposed to purchasing it, you're not paying the sales tax on that either. So there are little things like that that you think when it's just one sale, it's inconsequential, but when you add them up across the Commonwealth, you find that some of the revenues that we expected uh, have not come to fruition. There's some consideration about um, sales tax on, on items that are purchased online, but also uh, one, of the, one of the items that is in the budget is the issue of Airbnb, so that if you are renting your home uh, for the weekend to someone else, instead of them going to a hotel, they're renting your home. Um, we're not collecting any uh, sales tax on that or hotel motel tax on that. And there's an issue of equity. If you're a hotel owner, you're not happy because um, somebody is undercutting you. And so that's being looked at at the state level. And uh, you know, there'll probably be some type of resolution there. The marijuana issue is very complicated. Uh, as you know, the referendum was adopted uh, last November, uh, which will allow for the retail sale of marijuana. The city of Peabody was one of the communities that was not in favor of adopting this new law. And the mayor has been vociferous in his opposition to that occurring. Um, the city council recently adopted a, um, a zoning overlay map that there is a certain section of the city where they would allow for the sale of medicinal marijuana. Um, and it was the feeling that if we did not identify an area within the city where this would be available, that we could be subject to a lawsuit. At the state level, the Committee on Marijuana is coming out with its report and um, the Senate and the House will both uh, debate that in the next few days 
and uh, some of what I understand is in the bill would give more give more authority to the city council, where now there's the um, option of a municipality placing the issue on the ballot to opt out of the law. And Peabody has chosen to do that, to put it on the ballot. But my understanding is the legislation that is forthcoming will uh, negate a referendum and put that responsibility with the city council and boards of selectmen right back to the municipal leaders. An update on the opioid bill. Senator Lovely and I sponsored a uh, bill. We talked with some of our local firefighters and some other first responders. And what it would do is um, establish a database so that when an overdose occurs, the first responders have that information. And then if they do a follow-up program uh, later in the week, they can go to that home and um, offer them whatever programs they think are available to them. And, and part of the issue was that they could go to one home uh, because they knew the overdose occurred in Peabody. But if I was a Peabody resident and the overdose occurred in a neighboring community, I wouldn't have that information. So I would be offering one neighbor services where his next door neighbor may, may need them. And it would, it would be a way to assist in that regard. About two weeks ago or so, our, our bill was heard before the Public Safety and Homeland Security Committee. And we're optimistic that it will be moving forward shortly. Um, what will happen is it will now, if, if we get a favor, favorable report from the committee, and I'm optimistic that that will occur, that that will be referred to Ways and Means, and it will be another round of working on the bill, and if anybody has concerns, we may do some tweaking there. But uh, the, the good news is it's moving forward. We've been working on locating the RMV. Um, obviously, I would like it in Peabody. We had difficulty finding a location that was um, suitable for them. But the decision had been made with the last RFP, which is a request for proposal, to locate the registry at the former David's Bridal Building, which is on Route 1 South in Danvers. It's right on the Peabody line. I have to be honest with you, I'm a little bit frustrated that it's, had, it's been a year since the RMV closed over the Liberty Tree Mall. Um, I don't think things are moving quickly enough. It is my understanding that the negotiations for the lease and the final terms of that has not been completed. And what that does is it pushes out the opening even further. So I spoke with the registry the other day. Um, we're supposed to talk again soon because things need to move and they're not moving to my satisfaction. Affordable housing is probably one of the most difficult issues that we face here. Um, you know, I, I said that the last time we talked that um, the number one, number one request we get in the office is housing, housing problems, housing issues. And it's not just somebody on the lower end of the economic scale. Uh, we, you know, it, it's every demographic. Uh, we need to make sure that there's a mix, that it's not just all high-end homes, not just all low-end homes, that, it, that it's, you know, um, affordable homes for people in the workforce. And, um, you know, it's, it's a municipal issue in many respects, but there are a lot of um, efforts here at the state level to create programs that would be beneficial. Um, some of them I agree with, some of them I don't. One of the bills that went through the Senate last year um, would have um, allowed more uses as far as cluster development and not having to get zoning changes for uh, multifamily homes. And I was very reluctant to support something like that because when you look at a city, a city like Peabody, we don't want to be putting multifamily housing in a single family housing development or a single family neighborhood. So we have to be very cautious about how we go about that. Um, you know, Chapter 40B, which is a real hot button issue, and, and we're experiencing that on, on you know, uh, the Elks property in Peabody on Oak Street. Um, you know, um, there's a need for it, but there has to be a balance. You can't just come in with a 40B project that is just so dense uh, or densely designed and want so many units that far exceed what the neighborhood really can handle. So I, I, there has to be a balance. We understand that there's a need for affordable housing, but you also have to understand the, um, the wishes of the neighborhood as well. Transportation-wise, recently I've been working with Mass Highway. Uh, actually, I've been working with them for about a year, but I think we finally re reached a resolution at the Centennial Drive intersection where it has been my contention all along that the yield signs are backwards. 
as, as you come off of Route 128 North, you did not have yield signs. And so the traffic coming over the bridge was expected to yield, which is just counter to how we were taught how to drive in Massachusetts. So once the resurfacing has been completed, the lanes are going to be much more clearly marked. So when you come off the highway from Route 128 North, the right lane is going to be exclusively for a right turn to Centennial Drive West, so going into the park. The other lane that kind of curves will be the lane that will yield, will cross over, and then you'll go over to Centennial Drive East to Summit Street. So it should be a much more safe intersection. Also in transportation, interestingly enough, there is really a push for regulation to automated vehicles. And, you know, some of us think that's the Jetsons, and we're going to be flying around in these, in these cars, but, um, and we also think it's down the road. But the technology is already here. The bigger challenge is, number one, regulation, because we had a hearing where some of the big auto manufacturers were here, and, and at least one of them said, we don't want any state regulation. Let the federal government take care of it. Others are saying, no, we want it in the state so we understand what you expect of us. Um, and then municipalities have to be ready for it because it's not just the car driving down the street, but you have to have the sensors in the road so that they know when to stop, uh, what streets are one way. There are a lot of things here that um, are not yet implemented. So as far as the technology being here, it's here. It's how we use it, and that's going to be the big debate over the next couple of years. But it is coming. Always in the budget, we're looking for things that will benefit the city of Peabody. And, you know, we did our uh, Chapter 90 money recently where we, we authorized uh, the Chapter 90 money for the 2018 fiscal year, which starts July 1st. Uh, chapter 90 is your road and bridge money. And that's money that will go to the municipalities to help them with their street replacements and repaving projects. Um, Peabody for 2018 will be receiving roughly uh, $1.25 million to assist in that. So locally we have uh, a couple that are very important to me. One was a uh, $25,000 um, stipend for the um, public service, public safety memorial, which is being constructed across from Emerson Park on Perkins Street. And I just thought it was important that a lot of money has been raised privately by uh, police and fire personnel. They went out and uh, raised that money through golf tournaments and, and other events. Uh, the city of Peabody has contributed some money through its uh, community preservation fund. And I thought that the state had a stake in this as well. And would, I think it's important that we contribute to that. Um, so we're actively seeking that money. We're um, advocating everywhere I can on behalf of the city of Peabody for that money. Also another $25,000 for the uh, centennial celebration. I know that has passed but there are a lot of bills and it's not unusual. A lot of communities have received a lot more assistance than what I'm asking for the city of Peabody. And I, I think it's only right that, um, you know, people attended some of those events weren't Peabodyites. They came, they spent money in Peabody. It's a way to promote the city, to promote the region. And so I think a couple tourism dollars going for that is, is certainly justified. Um, and always we're fighting for local aid. So we'll do our best in this budget and whenever we can, we're working on Peabody's behalf. Well, you can find me in a few places uh, if, if you need to talk with me. Um, every other Thursday for the next six months, I'm still at the City Council. You can find me there. We try to do office hours on a monthly basis. We pick a, a location every month um, so that, and let people know that we're available. Um, my email is thomas.walsh at mahouse.gov. The office number is 617-722-2676. And uh, again, every other Thursday night I'm at city council meetings. Uh, you might find me on one of my islands uh, planting my, my flowers or trimming things up, weeding, whatever. And uh, I'm around town, so people know where to find me and, and I'm available.